Because we spend most of our time outdoors, where the unexpected could happen at any time, you really should be prepared. Did you know that your insurance often fails to cover cost of air transport in a medical emergency? With an Air MedCare Network membership, you can protect you and your whole household. If an emergency arises, Air MedCare Network can provide air medical transport service to the nearest appropriate hospital. As a member, you will have no out-of-pocket cost, as long as you're flown by Air MedCare Network provider. Secure a peace of mind for you and your whole family by joining the Air MedCare Network. With more than 3 million members nationwide, it is the largest group of emergent air transport providers in the world. And now, with a new one-year membership, you get a $10 Visa gift card. Just visit airmedcarenetwork.com slash waypoint and use the offer code waypoint. Also brought to you by the Boatyard in Fort Lauderdale. Eat local, but stay coastal at the Boatyard Restaurant. The Boatyard is located at 1555 Southeast 17th Street in Fort Lauderdale. That means you can come by boat or you can come by car. Enjoy the nautical atmosphere whether you sit inside in the cold AC or outside on the patio bar. The Boatyard has something for everyone. Monday through Friday, happy hour. Where local favorite is bar bites and handcrafted cocktails. Open for lunch, dinner, and the popular Sunday brunch. And don't forget, Ladies Night, every Thursday night from 7 to 10 p.m. where ladies drink free. Dock and dine at the famous Boat Yard in Fort Lauderdale. I am sure you'll have a great experience. Clear the airways. The Lunker Dog is on the air. Are you ready? This is the Real Guy Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Lunker Dog Real Guy Show. This is the longer dog, and I'm with Stephen Busaka today, and um, Busaka's got a uh, Busaka's got a recording that he wanted to do, and um, he called me up this week, said he was going to come over, and uh, first of all, thanks Stephen for being in here today. Thank you for having me, my man. You know, I like doing podcasts with you. I do too, man. We always have a good time. Yeah, I get issues like doing a podcast with a guest every single week. Do you know why? Because they can't keep up. No, they can keep up just fine. But um, there's so much shit that goes through my mind every week, right? That I want to say or whatever that I think about talking about. And then you have a guest come on. And then you talk about the guest. And then another week goes by. And then I don't get to say what I want to (laughs) say. You follow me? Yeah. Yeah, I do. So the guest thing, I mean, that's like a double-edged sword. I mean, it's cool to get the good guest. Like yeah. all those cool guests we like had. Rufus like Rufus and right, Taylor. Pre- Pre-LunkerCon guests. Yeah, man. Peter Miller, all the cool dudes. George, all of them. Carl, all right. of them. Good stuff, good stuff, right? Yeah. Except at the end of the recording, and then the week goes by, and I'm like, I had all this shit I wanted to say. I got to say nothing. Yeah. Well, yeah, because then all of a sudden, like, we have a plan of what we're going to say, with the, what we're going to talk about with the guest, and then it kind of goes off on a tangent and then all those questions that we had written down no i get the questions <laughs> the questions i get i ask the guests the question that they tell me and i sit there and listen to it and then I, we respond we have conversation but all the crazy shit that was going through my mind during like the week that i wanted to like oh i'm gonna talk about this on the podcast and then i never say nothing because i'm talking about the guest or the guest is a guest and you're treating him like a guest you're supposed to treat your guests good. Yeah. So I'm not going to talk to them, make them listen to me. So the good thing is when you record with me, it's like you can say all that crazy stuff. Right. If it comes to mind. Yeah. But it's, then it has to come to mind. It, well, that's true. So it usually comes to mind when I'm like, <laughs> you know, and then I have a guest and then another week comes by and then I forget about it. So I write shit down on that pad and read. That's what I started doing too. It works, right? It actually does work. You know, but I actually, I want to take this opportunity because, you know, I want to try to do another, like just a real kind of real short one, like maybe just 10, 12 minutes. And I got this idea yesterday. Um, I was thinking about it, you know, like, like tarpon fishing is your thing. You know what I mean? And for me, these last few months, um, you know, bone fishing on the flats has kind of become my new thing, Right. you know, right, right. Both of which. It's hard fishing, you know? They're both challenging in their own ways, well, you know? Well, that's like, as far as, you know, 
fishing goes, tarpon, bonefish, you know, permit, uh, permit, um, I don't know, big, marlin. big snooks, certain marlin, certain places. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's like, it's hard. It's advanced. It's not easy. Right. Yeah. You know, well, we love doing it, you know, but one thing I've, I've noticed is I feel like everybody still has something that they like to do that's kind of like a guilty pleasure, you know? And so let me kind of, let me kind of explain that. Yeah, so, explain that. So I'm my not... thing is this. You know, obviously, I love sight casting the bones. You know, I love the challenge behind it. You know, the reward when you finally get them in. But one thing that I really love to do is when I go over to my buddy Billy's house, he's got a big lake in his backyard. And we go back there with one of those little rods that you'll see people use for like sheep's head and stuff like that. And we'll just put a little hook and little bread balls on there. And we'll just sit in his backyard and just catch bluegill. We'll let him go, but it's. It's the easiest thing in the world. Like it takes no real, you know, skill to do. Right. But it's a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, so I kind of consider that my guilty pleasure. So I wanted to ask you if you have a guilty pleasure like that with fishing, if there's something that, you know, doesn't really take the kind of skill that tarpon does that, but you still enjoy doing it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, there's like those little guilty pleasures, as you call them. They never go away. The shit that you like you know, that you enjoy. I mean, like, for instance, um, I don't know, catching moonfish with a fly rod. Really? It doesn't, like, take a whole ton of skill or whatever. Like, I used to, that's how I used to teach the kids to, to fly fish is we'd go out and we'd catch little tiny look-down fish and moonfish and lights or, you know, little shadow line or whatever. And you only had to teach the kid to throw to the shadow line and strip it real slow. And then the you know, little moonfish would get on there and they could whoop it real quick and bring it to the boat. And then uh, I actually taught Bursa how to fly fish like that. The big Bursa man? Yeah. Yeah. So we go out and, and we're catching mooners on fly. Really? And we were having a blast. That's what I mean. and carrying it's... on. And then we fill up the five-gallon bucket full of mooners. And then we end up cleaning them and eating them. Bursa loves eating moonfish. They're supposed to be good eating. I haven't had them, but I heard good stuff about them. They're great eating. Um, but, yeah, I find myself sometimes, you know, like, hey, just go a bunch of mooners sitting over there and start catching them. It's like, again, it doesn't take a lot of effort, but there's still, like, enjoyment that you get out of doing it. Big time. You know what I mean? So how, how often do you get to do it nowadays, though? Uh, I mean, it's not like I get to, like, you know, spend a night doing it. But I get in a few minutes here and there with my clients. Okay. Like all summer long, we do a lot of light fishing and dock fishing and shadow line fishing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it's fun. You know, you, you can see the fish ahead of time, you know. It's not exactly the hardest thing in the world. No. I mean, catching a tarp in that way is not easy. No. But the other stuff I'm talking about, the moonfish and the jacks. Yeah. Sometimes we get a triple tail doing that. But um, every summer... I get to do it a couple, three, four, five times a summer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Be just me and one guy out there and we'll pull up to a light and, you know, and let him catch a couple and then I'll catch a couple and then we'll sit there and bullshit or whatever and then we'll move yeah. on. That's but, awesome. But yeah, you know, some stuff never goes away. No, it really doesn't. And I, I just, like I said, I was thinking about that last night. I was like, you know, I know it's easy, but it's, we still had so much fun doing it. But do you realize what prima donnas we are? In what sense? Well, like, we have a choice living down here in South Florida. That is true. I mean, what do you know, like, you're like, you know, living in South Jersey, you know? Okay, so you got your striped bass, which is, you know, kind of like the top end of the... It's like the snook of up north. Right, well, it's like the top end of the sport fishing spectrum, at least inshore, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the top end. <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't get to go after something more advanced than that or harder than that not that that's not a hard you know you want to catch lunker striped bass you got to be pretty good at it and yeah. kind of know what you're doing in order to do it consistently but i'm just saying that it stops there yeah i mean you got bluefish but yeah they, yeah exactly it stops there <laughs> i just feel like that's all they really talk about here, we're like we're like crazy prima donnas like we got biscayne bay oh yeah we can go now i want to pull the flats and learn how to be a bone fisherman all right bonefish busaka and then me i'm gonna take people out and catch a tarpon every single night yeah you know, and we we're spoiled <laughs> definitely and we're prima donnas we are 
No, but if you think about that too, it's like we how good we have it down here. Like we can literally, I like again, I can go out to Biscayne Bay and go catch a bonefish, sight cast a bonefish, and then I could come back in and that same afternoon I can go over to freaking Cooper City Davy with a little piece of bread and start catching bluegill. Right, and you can do it 365 days a year. Exactly. Because I was asking Carl about that too. I said, you know, we got the winter coming up. I said, is it still possible to get the bonefish? And he said, yeah, it's harder. But it's different. Yeah. It's just like the tarpon. I mean, we catch the tarpon year round. Mm -hmm. You know, and you don't catch them the same way. They're not the same fish or different sizes, blah, 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 blah. But at least we can like pick and choose the sport. And I mean, the fish. Right. I mean, you up there, I mean, you got the straight bass, bluefish, flounder fluke. Dogfish. Quad. Quad. <laughs> no, I got the dogfish up there that they hate catching. And whatever. But, a skate maybe here and there. But, I mean, it's an that's eel. That's kind of it. Right now, we're going down. We're not yeah. going up. We're I was going to say, we're kind of like, we're not getting more impressive with the species. So, for your, like, what do you call it? Guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasures. I got a feeling those people are a little bit more guilty up there of doing guilty pleasures because they don't have the what option. What we have down here. Right. Right. So my, my last question to you before we wrap this up is, is there a, t is there a fishing, a type of fishing that you consider a guilty pleasure that you want to do, but you really haven't done it yet? A guilty pleasure that I haven't done that I'd like to do. Yeah. It's a little bit tricky, right? I haven't thought of it. Like, you know, most of the shit that I can't do isn't exactly what you would call easy. It's usually more on the advanced thing. Yeah. But now that you've, Make him out, making me think. If you start smelling some burning, some smoke, right? Sensation. Then, uh, huh? Let me think. See, this is why it's better than having me than a guest, because I I make you think. No, my guests make me think. Yeah, but usually you're like quicker. Well, dude, it's kind of <laughs> retarded. It's hard for me to force myself to be like more retarded than I already am. <laughs> but um, I really can't think of one. I I got one. All right, let's hear it. I got one, and I was actually doing it in uh, in Costa Rica. What is that? I was boogie boarding. You never boogie boarded? I used to boogie board. It was like, you know, before I started surfing all the time, and then, you know, when Victoria got a little older, I'd boogie board a little bit more, and, you know, it's not exactly the hardest thing to do, but, man, I was having a blast. Now, when you say boogie board, you mean like where you're on the shore, right, and the wave comes in, and then you run, throw it down, and jump on it, right? No, that's skim boarding. What, what's boogie boarding? Boogie boarding is basically just, basically just body surfing, except you got this little foam board. And you're not standing up, right? No, you're just laying on it. That's what I mean. It's not that hard. They called, oh, that's boogie boarding? That's boogie board. I never knew that. How the hell could you not know that? I don't know. You're from South Florida, from, right? I don't know. I always thought that that was, in that what did you call it, skim boarding? In that beach that you grew up fishing on, that has an Dangy ocean beach. there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that means there was <laughs> waves coming in there. Yeah. And you never saw a boogie board. Well, I would see him skimboard, but I always thought that was boogie boarding. That's not skimboarding. It's skimboarding. I always thought that was boogie boarding. Do you know what they used to call skimboarding up in Massachusetts? What did they call it? They called it pizza boarding. Would they use like a pizza box to do it? No, because they used to cut it out round. It would be a round board, like straight round, not like diagonally round or oval round, but round, round like a pizza. And then you throw it down, you know, a disc, you know? Yeah. And then you run and you jump on it. And okay. they would call it a pizza board. When I first pizza boarded, I was up in Massachusetts before we even moved here. Really? So you were pretty young at the time. Fucking crazy young, but anyway, boogie boarding. What about you? You got any, you know, you guilty know, pleasures or whatever? That, I, that I'd still like to do. But you haven't done yet. But I haven't done it yet. Let's think about this. Dude. See, now I'm like in the same boat as you now. Here I was making fun of you. It's your topic. You figure you just have one. I know. <laughs> I never really think we'd, I never thought we'd get this. <laughs> Do I got to pause so you can think? No, of one no. I, I, I tell you what, I got one. Um, what's that thing? That I, I never know what, to, what, what it's called. And I'm sure you're going to make fun of me for this too. You seem in the Bahamas. What is it? Not, is it not kite surfing where they, where they take you in. You're sitting down kind of, and there's a big parachute, and you go off the back of the boat, and you're like freaking parasailing. parasailing. You want to do that? I'd like to do that one day. I got to tell you. I know it's, I don't know if that's a but sellout that, move. But, but that's not the question you asked me. You asked me if I, you asked me if there's anything that 
I still do. No, no, that you still want to do but haven't done. That I haven't done. Well, how do I know if it's a guilty pleasure? I've never done it before. Exactly, but it's but because it's you know it's easy. It might be like you could kind of think of it as a guilty pleasure. Does that make sense? No, no. But, but but parasailing is for nerds. I know. I don't know if that was a sellout move. I mean, like at least once, just to try it. You know what I mean? Like I feel like I'm on top of the world up there. You know? You should do a hot air balloon ride. I think they do do those in Florida somewhere. Yeah, you can do that. Don't they have it at Homestead? I don't know, but I wouldn't take out no hot air balloon in Homestead. <laughs> what if the wind pushes you out there in the Everglades, and then you land out there in the mosquitoes, and then you got to spend the night out there? <laughs> and Herman Lucerne ain't alive no more to come and find me. <laughs> That's right. But even if they did come and find you, I mean, it's not like, I mean, you know, the mosquitoes like you. They love me. Are you kidding me? You've right. been around me out there. All right. Office people, they're into that. Bankers. Wow. Oh. Accountants. I got a freaking, I got a, what is that? I got a street more garlic, right? Amongst other things. Shoot. Do you think growing up Sicilian, I would like be having garlic as like a regular in my diet? Yeah. I don't know. That's yeah, all you right. would think so. You would, you would think, think so. so. But right. anyway, so is that it with your guilty pleasure thing? Yeah, just something really quick. You know? So you think it was good? I don't know. It's hard to tell when you it's do the hard. podcast. I, we never know if it's good or not until we listen to it afterward. Well, you do, you know, <clears throat> until you listen to it afterward. And then, and guys, feel free to give us an email because that's how I gauge how good or poor one of the recordings came out. So if you do like the recording. Um, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Jeff at LunkerDog.com. And if you don't like it, Or if you have a guilty pleasure that you think that uh, Busag would like to know about. You Let us know. Get us at Jeff at LongerDog.com. I'm going to come up with a, um, not come up with, I'm going to make a new uh, email address. I think we'll name it like um, podcast at LongerDog.com. Okay. So that way the people listen to the podcast that want to say something, they got their own yeah. box and they don't get mixed in with all the other crap. So um, That's a good idea. Yeah, right? Anyway, um, that's Stephen Busaka. I'm Captain Jeff. And... Um, that was guilty pleasures. If you didn't like the podcast and you thought thought it totally sucked, it was Busaka's. So don't give me a bad <laughs> rating. What? <laughs> what if they give me like a two? Listen, listen. So far, we got all five star ratings. I know, but most of the time, the topic's mine. So like, I know, but just remember this. I don't want them to give me like a two because they thought your topic yeah, well, sucked. Just remember this though. You th when I told you about this, you were excited about this, and you said, "Yeah, let's do it." Dude, so he is just as guilty, all right? No, I'm not just and as guilty. And here it is. We're calling it guilty pleasures. Right. I'm not just as guilty. It was Busaka's idea, Us? Busaka's topic. And now if they don't like it, you got to own it. Us doing these podcasts is like our guilty pleasure. <laughs> these are not easy. <laughs> these are not easy. Easy for you. you come and over, you. Now you come over here and get knowledge from an old person. And it's like, it's easy. Go, yeah. <laughs> Tips comes up and tries cuddling with me. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to the Real Guy Podcast. And until the next episode, which we're going to do in about two minutes, run that dog. Run that dog. Run that dog.